I ask that you anoint me and my lips of clay again today. Let your word come unhindered and unchecked by any external force. At the end of this message, let everybody be edified and let your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' name. Amen. First Peter chapter number two. First Peter chapter two. I'm going to read from verse four all the way to verse ten. First Peter two, verse four to ten. It says, Coming to him as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect. Can you say that word with me? Elect. Elect. elect precious. And he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious. But to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble, being disobedient to the word, to which they also were appointed. But you, somebody say, but me. me. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Glory to God. So we've been in this series that we, we called Theology Simplified, and today we're, we're, we're going to talk about election. Election. Uh, question for you before we get into it. Uh, which, which came first, the chicken or the egg? I can't really see your faces today because you're all dark. Uh, can you, can you, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Chicken. Okay, you're saying that because you're born again. Uh, because if you think about it, you say, you say the chicken came first, okay, but, but you have to hatch the egg before the chicken comes out. So, you know, but, but anyway, we understand that God created chicken and then chicken laid the egg. Uh -huh. But if you ask people in the world, they are confused about this. They've always been confused about it. And it's interesting to me because this is, this is the way that the concept of election and predestination, this is the way they are. They are, there is this confusion about, okay, which one is first? Is, did election come before predestination? In fact, I was, I was thinking about it. That should I preach predestination before election? But me, I always like to be counter everything. So I decided that I'm going to do it the reverse. So that's why I preached predestination last week. Uh, but some people believe that election comes before predestination. Some say, no, it's, it's the other way around. It's just like the chicken and the egg. Predestination and election are like twins. So they are like identical twins um, who may look alike, sound alike, but are actually different people. If you've ever met identical twins, no matter how identical they are, they are unique individuals on their own. That's exactly the way they are. Uh, this concept of predestination and election, which we want to talk about today. And if you are, if you are like me, if you grew up in the, in, in the part of the world that I grew up in, um, for those of you who don't know me too well, I, I've only been in this, in this country of Canada for 10, 10 years. So I, I wasn't born here. I think that should be obvious. <laughs> yeah. So where I grew up, and for if, those of you who grew up in the same place that I grew up, when you hear the word election, you see that you, you, you hear the giggles now. Yeah. Something, something comes to your mind. It's different from what comes to your mind when you hear election here. Uh, and they say the prime minister wants to call an election. I'm like, what are they doing? These people don't know what election is. Election is warfare. It's physical warfare, you know, and it's, it's always a battle. It's always like this thing that everybody's afraid of. Everybody takes cover. Everybody is, you know, you stock up on all your things because you don't know what can happen as a result of the election. Uh, in, in, my, in my former country, um, because my Nigerian passport has expired, okay, <laughs> only Canadian passport that I have. So I'm actually only a Canadian right now, okay? Let, let's just be clear. So in, in that, my former country, okay, um, there's only been one election that everybody agreed that this one was okay. That we all agreed on the person that everybody voted for and that won the election. But the person did not become president. That's why the country is so wonderful. 
the the person who won that actually did not become president because he did a rally, declared himself as the winner of the election, and they arrested him, and he ended up dying in the prison. Okay, you are learning a lot about Nigeria today. So that's the only election that we have had that everybody agreed on that this is this was actually an election. Um, the recent one is still causing controversy in the hearts of people till now because there there is a candidate that everybody thought that okay this is our this is our preferred candidate. Um, among the elite and among the young people, okay? But among the actual people, <laughs> another fellow became president. <laughs> another person became president. And some people till now are still angry about it. That this is not, this person does not deserve to be president. You are angry, but I'm telling you what election is. That Satan is still angry that you are preferred. That's what I'm talking to you about. Yeah, that he's still upset that God literally and picked you <laughs> even though you don't deserve it you do not qualify for it and he is upset because the only difference between you and him is that god gave you free will and did not give him so satan's eternal destiny has been determined he cannot repent do you know how, how annoying that is like do you know how frustrating that is that he knows that <clears throat> Even if he changes his mind today and says, okay, this thing I'm doing is not working. All this evil that I'm doing is not actually working. I want to change my mind. He doesn't have the capacity to repent. So his eternal destination is already determined. But, but the difference, therefore, between us and him is that you, even if you're not saved right now, you can choose. You can wake up this morning and say, okay, you know what? I'm tired of being my own God. I want to serve the living God. And that is a massive, massive privilege. So we said... That predestination and election are like twins. But like any identical twins, even though they, they may look alike, they may sound alike, they, they, they are not the same person. Even though they are born out of the same mother, which is that both predestination and election were born out of God's foreknowledge. And if you were here last week, you already understand that. If you're just joining us or you're catching this halfway, you need to, this is a series of messages we're preaching. So you need to catch up with us from the very start. Both Wednesdays, I'm taking this, I'm taking us on a journey here. So we, we said that predestination is something that comes out of God's foreknowledge, not just his sovereignty. It's the same thing with election. But they each present a different side of God's foreknowledge. So I'm going to start this morning's message with a, a summary statement that should summarize the entire message that I want to preach to you. If you understand this statement that I'm about to make, this is the best way that I could find as of today. Maybe in five years' time, if I preach this message again, maybe I would have found a better way to explain it. But just in one sentence, what does this whole idea mean? This is the whole message right here. Are you ready? Okay, are you sleeping or are you ready? ready. Come on, guys, come on, come on. Wake up, wake up, okay? Are you ready for this? Yes. Okay, better, that's better. You know that that's better. <laughs> so where were you hiding that? All right, let's go. It says, based on, can you give me that on the screen, please? Based on God's foreknowledge of our choice to receive Jesus as Savior, God chose us, which is election, and then designed an everlasting plan for our lives, which is what we call predestination, or what some people call your destiny. And if you look at that statement, you can actually start it the other way around as well. So take it from the bottom and twist it all around and say that, an everlasting plan was made for our lives, right? Because God chose us. Because he knew that we we're going to choose Jesus. Does that make sense? This is the summary of everything. If you understand this, this whole thing, no, there will be nothing confusing about it. Yeah, there will be nothing confusing about it. So it, it all depends on the fact that you choose. And God is not going to design this fantastic plan and we, we said this on Wednesday that people say things like oh destiny cannot change <laughs> don't believe that stuff don't believe it because decision determines destiny and we saw that clearly on Wednesday night so if we decide that we want to go the way that God has planned we will end up where he has planned if we decide that we don't want to go that way we'll end up somewhere else Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 it says here before I formed you in the womb I knew you in other words before God began to form this, this prophet, he was already existing. He said, I knew you. Before I formed you, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. That is his destiny. But there was still a foreknowledge and there was still a choosing. Are you with me? All right. So, let me say it again in a different way. 
based on God's foreknowledge of your choice to follow him. He chose you and then came up with a plan for your life. Let's get into it. First Peter chapter 1, from verse 1 to 2, we see the Apostle Peter here introducing himself. Let's get into this idea of election and what it means, okay? He says from verse 1, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the pilgrims of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. Do you see that? Peter is telling us that he is, he is one of the elect, but that election is according to the foreknowledge of God the Father in sanctification of the Spirit, which is another concept we will learn about in this series, sanctification, for obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace be multiplied. So I, I want you to pay attention to that, that the scripture tells us that election is according to foreknowledge. Now, in the New Testament, every time you see the word elect, there are two synonyms that are used for this word in the New Testament. There are, one is called and the other one is chosen. Last week, I already dealt with the issue of called at the end of the message. Do you remember what the meaning of called is? What does it mean? It was just seven days ago. What was the meaning of called? <laughs> Invited. This is why you have to listen to it over and over again. There's no one and done in this thing. I'm telling you, one and done has never helped anybody. Okay? So, what does the word elect mean? The Greek word that is used for this concept of elect is the word electos. And this is what it means. Electos means favorite, chosen. It's funny how a word will mean a word. Elect means elect. To choose or to select. So these are all the meanings of the word elect, and they are, they are valid meanings. But like, like we, you've been noticed that we have been dealing with, we are trying to look at this whole thing in a rounded way, okay? To see what the Bible says about all of this and to come up with a, a, a conclusion about it. Where does this word appear in the New Testament? Romans chapter 8, verse 33. It says, who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Justification is another concept we're going to talk about. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 12. It says, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering. So there is a way that the elect are supposed to behave. There is a code of conduct for the elect. Uh, the, the fact that you are elect does not mean, you, you know, give you the permission to, to do anyhow and, and live anyhow and do whatever you like. So we see it clearly here that there is, a, there is a pattern, there is an expectation. What does the word chosen mean? Chosen is the word electomai. It means to pick out or to select. So you see why there are synonyms. Electomai is to pick out and to select. That is why sometimes they are used interchangeably. Now, the word election itself, just stay with me, we'll get to my point in a moment, but I need to define the concept to you, okay, so that you understand it. Election derives from the Greek word eklegomai. This is the root word of the meaning of everything, and this definition is so important. Because what we do, a lot of, you know, Bible teachers is that when we look at definitions, we cut them short and just pick what we like from it and leave the rest of it. But the definition is complete for a reason. So it says here that the word means to choose for oneself. If you stay just with that, it means that I'm, I'm choosing based on what I like and don't like. And I'm just choosing. Him, the wise, and God has chosen. All of this chosen is the, the, the word that, that is used here. Chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen, and the things which are not, to bring to nothing the things that are. So, so all of that is where this expression comes up, is why I'm showing you that scripture. Um, by the way, do you know that Christianity is both inclusive and exclusive? Okay, not all of you know, so I'll explain it. Christianity is inclusive in that the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Everybody is welcome. But it is also exclusive because Jesus is the only way. He is not a way to God. He is the way. And this is where people have issue with Christianity. <laughs> that how can you say <laughs> that Jesus is the only way to God? 
that no, there has to be other ways because there are, there are over 500 official religions in the world, but there are literally thousands of religions in the world. Some people don't know that soccer is a religion too. Because if it becomes your God, it's a religion. Yeah, if everything you sleep and drink and eat is, is, is your religion, your oki can be a religion to you. Yeah, so, so when we think about Christianity, think about the fact that, yeah, it's inclusive. Everybody is welcome. God, is, his arms are wide open to every single person because that is, his, that is his will, that is his desire. But it is exclusive. And this is, this is the fact that God is not going to beg you to accept his standard. He's not going to, he's not, look, if you, if you don't accept it, that's your, is your cup of beverage. Do you understand? Like, he's not, he doesn't change anything about God. All that he is saying, all that he has prepared, all that he is asking you to do, it's about you and your eternal destination. Look, the eternal destination of every single one of us is a debt we all owe, just like where you will live. So I tell people when they say, oh, I don't want the mortgage because I don't want to be in debt. You're already in debt. Because you have a landlord that you are paying rent to. Except you want to live with, with mommy till kingdom come. Which is okay. No, 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 that's fine. That's okay. I wish I had a mommy that I can live her. Hey, I'll be there in the basement. <laughs> I'll be there. I like the wife I married. What she always tells me is that it doesn't matter where we live as long as we are together. So that's fine. We'll be there. But I'm saying to you... <laughs> I'm saying to you, though, that you already owe that debt. You understand what I'm, what I'm talking about? You already owe it. It's a debt that is there. So, so except by some, by some uh, uh, grace and providence, you are able to put some money together and actually own a debt-free house, which should be everybody's dream and goal. But all I'm saying is your eternal destination, therefore, the fact that you are born on this earth. You know, people choose um, uh, 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 exit from this world as though it's going to end all the problems. It's the beginning of the problem. Because suddenly you are going to be faced, <laughs> you are going to get to a crossroad. You chose to bring yourself to that crossroad. And you will now be faced with a, a, a no, no going back. Where now, it's not about whether you choose or don't choose. Here is where you can choose or not. At that point, when, when this life is done and you have, cho you have chosen to exit and go to the other side, there's only one way forward. You are either a sheep or you are Good. God bless you. God bless you. That's not even in my, in my slides. So, let, here comes my point now. That one was for someone. Here comes my point. So that we can simplify this concept of election. Number one point, then this one is so critical. You have to remember this thing 20 years from today. If I ask you, what is election? This is the first thing that must come out of your mouth. Are you listening to me? Number one point, Jesus is the first elect. This is the beginning and the end of all election. <laughs> Jesus Christ is the first elect. The basis of our election as saints is the election of Jesus Christ. So, you know, we always like to say that we are God's favorite. God loves me so much. And you are correct. That, oh, I'm, I'm the apple of God's eye. Ooh, ooh, ooh. God loves me. Ooh. But just always remember to say, in Christ. So every time you say, I can do all things. I can do all things. I can do all things. I say, oh boy, you are lying. You can do all things through Christ. So never get to the point where you think. Because if you are saying that you are God's favorite, what you are saying to God is that, God, allow me to prove that I can do all, everything right and I can be perfect. And, um, and I can be spotless and I can be sinless. Then you should be the lamb that take away the sins of the world. So every time you think about this concept, always remember that Jesus is the first elect. And my election is based on the election of Jesus. Glory to God. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 1. Isaiah 42, verse 1. It says, Behold, my servant whom I uphold, my elect one in whom my soul delights, I have put my spirit upon him. It will bring forth justice to the Gentiles. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 6. I'm just trying to establish this, that Jesus is, is the, the first one that God said, This is my elect one. Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion, a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. So we are, we are grafted in. It has nothing to do with what we do or don't do or how, how much perfection we are able to achieve. It is about the election of Jesus Christ. Then he says in Isaiah 28 verse 16, Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion a stone for a foundation, 
a tried stone, and I've told you before, when you see stone, you, you know he's talking about Christ. That's the first thing that should come to your mind. A precious stone, a, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation, whoever believes will not act hastily. So I am elected because Jesus was elected by God. Please always remember this and write this down in your notes. The reason why I can call myself the elect is because Jesus was elected by God. Ephesians 1 verse 4. Just to see one more scripture here. Ephesians 1 4 says, Just as he chose us in him. He chose us where? In him. So if we are not found in him, there's no choosing for you. Uh -huh. He chose us in him before the foundation of the world. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So you were chosen by God, and guess what? You were not even present. <laughs> How is it possible? Because you had an elected representative there. So you see how this works. So Jesus was the one who stood in the place for you, and it is based on his own election. Every time we come to God, we have to understand this, that when we come to God, uh, let me tell you, it doesn't matter. And I know when, when we teach this, it, it sounds like a license for people to just do whatever they like. You know I don't teach that. But whenever you are praying and God is looking at you, huh? And you come to God. Look, if you are in Christ, God does not see you. He's seeing Jesus Christ. That is the whole idea. So it has nothing to do with your righteousness. It says your, all your righteousnesses are like filthy rags. <laughs> so does that mean you should not be righteous or you not try to live holy? Of course, that does not mean that. But you have to understand that the, 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 the perfection, the sacrifice that took away the wrath of God was the one that Jesus Christ paid. That is the ultimate sacrifice, and you always have to understand that. So, he didn't need the benefits of redemption. That is Jesus. He, all he did was to hold those things in place for as many that would believe in him. And there's more than enough of it to go around. There's no depletion of his resources. So, because uh, uh, one, one billion people are now saved, that means that the salvation is about to end. No, there's nothing like that. There's nothing like that. You are as precious to, to, to God as Jesus Christ is. Is that too big for you to understand? You are just as precious to God because the, the cost of your salvation was the blood of Jesus Christ. So you are just as precious to God as Jesus is. So every time you approach God, this is the understanding you must have. This is why God cannot make you a promise and you will say, God, God will fail you. You know, we say all these ridiculous things like, like God disappointed me. Hey? Before I get into my, my colloquialism, let me get back to my scripture. So my election for salvation... It's simply based on my decision to accept the elect one, whose name is Jesus. And my only link to all the benefits of redemption is my relationship with Jesus Christ. That is the only link that we have to all the benefits that redemption has to offer, is the relationship that we have with Jesus Christ. Never forget this. It was and is never going to be about us. Yes, you are loved by the Father. You are the apple of his eyes. I'm not saying you are not, but it is all because of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Point number two. We're talking about election. Point number two, Israel is God's elect. Israel is God's elect. We cannot talk about the concept of, of election without talking about God's chosen people, regardless of the world's current events, regardless. Uh -huh. so, so I've told you, every time you see something in the natural that, that looks like it's contradicting what Scripture says, Scripture always overrules everything on the natural. It has done so for more than 3,000 years. So it's not today. It's not today. Oh, I'm tempted to go to go Niger way now, but I'll stay with it. I'll stay with my message. No, no be today. Is that how we say it? No be today. All right. Israel are the perfect definition of election. Israel, that like, that like God just looked at a, a a random group of people. That one of the tiniest nations. <laughs> One of, maybe, maybe I thought about it. I said, maybe God was trying to, to just manage them. Maybe that's why they're so small. <laughs> one of the tiniest. And God just decided that this one was an ab act, absolute act of his will. That I'm just going to shower my love on these people. And through them, I will, I will make my love known to the world. It was a decision that he made. And I, I will show you how that, even though God made that decision, their actions... Huh? And the choices that people like Abraham made, that people like Moses made, still made sure that God's plan came to pass. Otherwise, they would have been destroyed since. Since. So God chose to reveal himself through a special group of people known as the Jews. And this was an act of his will. Let me show you that in scripture. Deuteronomy chapter 7. We're going to use the New American Standard Bible just so that we can get the formal language. 
from verse 6 to 7. It says, for, for you are a holy people to the Lord your God. Speaking about the Jews. The Lord your God. Now, and when we say the Jews, we are talking about the literal Jews. I'm not saying that you, are, you as Christians have replaced the Jews. There's nothing like that. Don't let anybody deceive you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh -huh. For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for his personal possession. Out of all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. The Lord did not make you his beloved, nor choose you because you were greater in numbers than any of the peoples. Since you were the fewest of all peoples. Psalm 147, verse 19 to 20. Psalm 147, 19 to 20. He says he declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and his judgment to Israel. He has not dealt thus with any nation. And as for his judgment, they have not known them. Praise the Lord. And I've told you, this is where it gets confusing for people is that, you know, over time, even though God says that this is what I want to do with your life, huh? if you decide... That, you know, there are some people that don't, still don't agree. Even the Jews that I'm talking about, that don't agree that they are God's chosen people. You don't know. Ah, they are. They, are still, they still exist. And they will argue with you that, no, we are still waiting for the Messiah. And I tell you, well, you will wait, oh. You will wait, because what you will see next is second coming. Yeah, that's the next thing that you will see. But there are still people. So I'm saying that even though God, God says, this is what I want to do with your life. This is your destiny. He reveals it to you when you were young. Everybody prophesied to you. You're a prophet to the nations. You're a prophet. If you grow up and say, I want to be a DJ. That I do all this prophet. I, I want to prophesy through. Chicka, 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 boom, he will leave you alone. Oh, yeah. He will leave you alone. And as you are DJing, people will be sensing that there is an anointing on this man's life. He's wasting it on this. Chicka, 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 boom, like something is. I'm telling you. Uh, everybody will be able to see it except you. Ezekiel 20. Maybe there's somebody in the room that wants to be a DJ. Because <laughs> the way you guys are laughing. <laughs> Ezekiel 20 verse 5. He says, say to them, I'm just going to show you a few more scriptures. Say to them, thus says the Lord God, on the day when I chose Israel and raised my hand in an oath to the descendants of the house of Jacob and made myself known to them in the land of Egypt, I raised my hand in an oath to them saying, I am the Lord your God. So like I said, even though this was an act of God's will to choose Israel, he still needed from the very beginning, Abraham especially, to obey him. When he told him, get out of your father's house and go to your... That was the beginning of the plan. If Abraham had said, leave me alone in my father's house. Huh? Leave me alone. I'm not going anywhere. The worst case scenario is that God will find somebody else to do it. But that would delay his plan. It would truncate the plan and we'll have to come up with something else. Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 to 2 is, is where that, that um, illustration is. It says, now the Lord has said to Abraham, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land which I will show you. I will make you a great nation. That's where the promise began. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. So Abraham played his part. Uh, you see it in Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 7 as well. It says, you are the Lord God who chose Abraham and brought him out of all of the Chaldeans and gave him the name Abraham. Moses also played a very important part in this. So it wasn't all just about God the sovereign and he just chose them and that's what it is. Psalm 106 verse 23. I know you think this part doesn't apply to you, but just wait. <laughs> if there was no Israel, there would be no us. Did you hear what I said? Aha. Uh -huh. Psalm 106 verse 23. Therefore, he said that he would destroy them. This was God. Had not Moses is chosen, you see that, stood before him in the bridge to turn away his wrath, lest he destroy them. So, so God had to, uh, in fact, the, the, I think the only reason why this, this whole plan is still intact is because what God did with Abraham was a covenant. So, so what it meant was that even if you, you people don't keep your own side of the bargain, I am committed to keep my own side of the deal. Glory to God. So God chose Israel and they are supposed to be a light to the nations. Isaiah 42 verse 6, my final scripture on this point. Isaiah 42, verse 6. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will also hold you by the hand and watch over you. And I will appoint you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the nations. So best believe, Israel will be saved. Israel will what? Be will be saved. Whether you're angry or you're not angry, they will be saved because that's what the word of God says. So finally, let's go to my last point. Point number three. Point number three. I know you will like this one. You smile better now. <laughs> Point number three, I am God's elect in Christ. And this is where the rubber meets the road. I am God's elect in Christ. In Christ. Very, very important. Because my election is strictly and solely in Christ. This is how we, the Gentiles, came to become God's elect. Do you understand that? You and I are Gentiles. 
We are Gentiles. Yeah, but we have been grafted in into the family. So if you want to look at it technically, we are, we are not Jews. How many of you are Jews? How many Jews are you? You know, it's okay to say you are a spiritual Jew. Technically, it's correct. But because there's a doctrine out there that Christians have replaced the Jews, it's a dangerous doctrine. Very dangerous. You will confuse yourself because you forget that you were grafted in. <laughs> you were grafted into the covenant. The covenant was not even your own. You were grafted in. And you have to always remember that. Glory to God. It's not, it's not for you to feel, feel less of yourself because, you know, when we talk about the concept of adoption, it sounds like, oh, you were adopted. Oh, huh? Let me tell you. Look, ask some parents. If they had a choice, they will not choose the children that they have. Oh, it sounds mean, but it's correct. Especially people in the world, they will not choose their children. Because you look at them and say, did I give birth to you? Come and see your son. No, see what your son is. Haven't you heard that before? But when it comes to adoption, you actually make a choice. You make a choice. That's what God did to you. He chose you. He selected you. That's what we're talking about. So when you, when you hear we have been adopted, it should not make you feel like, ah, so I'm just adopted. I'm not the original child. <laughs> It should make you feel like you are his favorite. You saw that word. You are his favorite. He, saw, he had a lot of options. A lot of people could have been in your shoes today. Some people this morning, they are still on over. What time is it? 11 o'clock. I'm telling you, there are people who are still on over right now. 11 o'clock. On Sunday morning, that they are sleeping in their house. That will not wake up until like 1 a.m. <laughs> huh? I will say, oh, we are going to work in the morning. Yeah? Because... They are living a life, and, and the grace of God has appeared to them. But for some reason, they have, they have not just come into the fullness of the knowledge of him. That's why it's very important. When you pray, the, one of the first things you thank God for is your salvation. Just say, Father, Father, I just want to thank you. Because I could have still been in the world wandering around, wandering around aimlessly, and not even know or understand that there is such a thing. You know, I was explaining to, to one of my friends the name of his son. So I told him, because his son's name is my friend. I can use him as a son. He might even be watching I can use my example. So his son's name is, is Theo. So do you know what Theo is? I explained this to you last week. So I told him, I said, dude, you literally named your child God. And he didn't know that. Okay, you guys are looking confused. You need to go back to the message of last week and listen to it. So all I'm saying is that you could have been ignorant. Just be there, just doing your own thing. You can give it to a child and name him Fish. Haven't you heard those names? Uh -huh. or, or stone, or rock, or whatever. And you don't know what it means. You have no idea. And, and I told him, I said, you, you chose the best name. Oh, this is the best name anybody can have. But I just want you to have an understanding that when you are calling him, you, don't, uh, you call him with respect, with awe. Because you chose the name. Okay, I'm just telling you. <laughs> okay, so just like predestination, election is based on my choice coming into agreement with God's choice. So God and picked you. But unlike a baby that you adopt, the baby cannot say, I'm not, I'm not doing. But you have a free will. You can reject that choice and say, God chose me. No. Haven't you seen people? Look, there was a, there was a gentleman. And I know that that prophecy is still going to come to pass because God's word cannot fail. The first week that PK, uh, the first uh, anniversary that PK came, he, he prophesied over a gentleman in this church who was with us at, at the beginning. Um, and he, he declared a lot of things. And, and as, as he was saying it, it was, there were parts of the things that PK was saying that God had already told me about him, that I had told the fellow how God was going to use him, how he was sent to the young people. I told him all of these things. And PK confirmed that in a prophecy on the stage. Do you know that the fellow ran away from the church? <laughs> because sometimes when you come face to face with God's plan for your life, you have a choice. You either embrace it or run away. But you cannot run away from God. No, you can't. You can't. You know, it, it's, it's funny. It's like when, when my, my children want to play hide and go seek in the house. The house is just two floors or two levels. So they'll go and hide. As they hide, I can see their leg. <laughs> Especially the lady. I can see his leg. And he's, and he's, and he's, and he's literally giggling. <laughs> but because I'm a nice father, I will pretend as if he's actually hiding. Mm -hmm. That's how God is with you. You say you're hiding from God. You just look at you like you're actually hiding. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's pretend that you're hiding. <laughs> Let's just pretend. And that's how God is with people. He will just be looking at you that you think you're running away from me. So let me say it again in case you have forgotten. This is the bottom line of everything. Based on God's foreknowledge of the choice that you will make to follow him, he elected you 
and then came up with a plan for your life, which is what you call your destiny, which is a, a predestination. But all of that is based on the fact that we chose uh, to accept the choice that he made. John chapter 15, verse 16, he says, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. So we did not choose him, but he chose us. And thank God we did not reject the choice. Some people did. And it tells us right there, John chapter 1, it tells us that some people actually rejected this choice. From verse 11, he came to his own. There are seven, there are seven things in the Bible that the Bible says clearly that would determine whether, whether you will be raptured with Christ or not. One of them is that you are a part of the church. Many believers don't know that. Some believers want to do isolated Christianity. Okay, I think I'm scaring you already. Look, all of those seven things, and I'll, maybe I'll, I should do this, I'll teach you this. All of those seven things, if you are in Christ, if you are what? In Christ, they are already done. The only one that you can choose by yourself not to do is this one of being in, in, among the church. So he's, he's not coming for isolated Christians. He's coming for the church, his bride, the church. So it's not that when the rapture happens, you see... Uh, Ark Pope Bishop something flying said so the microphone will not be saying oh here goes Ark Bishop he, he has won twelve thousand souls he's going no 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 all of us are going together all of us it doesn't matter how many souls you want all of us are going together we are all going together it's the church that is coming for so one of the ways that you can exempt yourself is if you you cannot say you love God and you hate his his bride. It's like you come in to me all the time and say, oh, P.S., oh, you're the best pastor ever lived. I love you so much. Then whenever I see you and, and my wife, it's like, oh, I don't want to talk to her. Ah. You know, I have a problem with you. Oh, I have a big problem with you. Because you can't say you love me if you ate my bride. And that's what some Christians want to do. They say they love God, but they can't stand the church. I digress, but it's an important digression. Very important. So maybe we'll tackle that on Wednesday. So that you see, there are seven of them, but there's nothing to be scared of. If you are in Christ, sit your bum bum there. Stay there. <laughs> going up and down. The reason why God put you among believers is because there are some things about you that only people can fix. E.g. greed, selfishness. When you talk anyhow and they, and they talk back at you, they say, ah, and you correct yourself. God wants to mold you and shape you in a way. People will offend you. It's church. It's church. Pastor Bayo used to say in Vancouver that if you find the perfect church, don't join them. All. Because you will corrupt the whole thing. Yeah, if the church is perfect, just leave them alone. Don't join. Because the minute you join them, you are the problem. <laughs> Who was it that we're listening to? Was it Rick, Rick Ryan or somebody that we're listening to that, that was saying that, that uh, if, oh yeah, it's the book that the, the ministers are reading, that it was saying that if, um, if, if you don't know who, the, who the, problem, the problem minister among the group of ministers are, you're probably the one. <laughs> it's probably you. <laughs> Glory to God. Let's, let's land this plane. Let's land this plane. Where are we? Um, we are in Ephesians now. Let's go to Ephesians. So God chose us in Christ. Everything I enjoy is based on Christ's election. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 to 6. Let me show you a few scriptures more. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. Glory to God. So my election in Christ guarantees me certain privileges. And I want to mention this to you just quickly. And I'll close with this. There are certain privileges that you, you need to, to understand that you have by virtue of the fact that you are elect and you are in Christ. The first one is what is called priesthood. And that is in Mark chapter 15, verse 37 to 38. It says, And Jesus cried out with a loud voice and breathed his last. Then the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And what that represented there was that now we all have access to the Father. We are all priests in the New Testament. Unlike the Old Testament where only the high priest could go into the Holy of Holies. All of us now can have direct access to the Father through Jesus Christ. Glory to God. So that is the first thing. It's called priesthood. You, you, are, the, you are the first official priest over your life. Anything anybody else wants to say has to support what you are declaring over your life. You cannot be saying, I'm doomed. My life is going, and I'm here standing and blessing you every day. Your own will override mine. Did you hear what I said? Yes. Because you are the first priest over your life. All right. Number two that you can expect as a privilege of this is answered prayers. Luke chapter 18, verse 7. 
And shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? So you can be sure that because you are God's elect, he hears and answers your prayers. He says, he says in Isaiah, before you call, before you call. So you have, to, you, have, you have to have an assurance that when you are approaching your, he is your father. Just think about it, that will, will God deny Jesus anything if Jesus approached God and said, I need a shoe? Just think about it. You think about that. This is why it's ridiculous. What is it that you need? You need a house. What is it that you need? What is the problem? That you now be carrying God's name everywhere. I'm saying, I've been trusting God for this. And we use that spiritual language. You know, I've been believing God for this for, for 12 years. Oh boy. You need to check the thing properly. Maybe something is wrong with that, what you are asking for. And how you want to use what you are asking for. But God is not wicked. He said, if he, if he, if he did not withhold Jesus from us, how will he not now give us with him, freely give us all things? Yes. The biggest thing that, G- that God had is Jesus. Yes. And he already surrendered that. There's nothing else you want to ask him for that is too big. The only issue is, are you going to use it right? Or are you, are you trying to have it so that they will know that you have? Point number three. This is not point number three. This is a bonus, Max. I'm just giving you a bonus. These are the privileges that you can expect. Protection from Satan's accusations. As we close here. Romans chapter 8, verse 33. He says, who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. So Satan cannot bring any accusation against you. Anything that is in your past before you came into Christ is in the past. Gone, dead and buried. There is, no, there, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So this leads to our justification, which is a whole other concept that we're going to talk about in this series. So always remember this every time you think about election or predestination. Jesus is the first elect. Jesus is the firstborn, the Bible tells us, among many brethren. That's in Romans chapter 8, verse 29. He's the firstborn among many brethren. From whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So it is because of his sacrifice that we become sons and daughters of God. Our election, our predestination, justification, sanctification, propitiation, redemption, all the shun, 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 is in Christ. It's all in Christ. Glory to God. All of it is in Christ. Uh, Acts chapter 17, verse 28. For in him we live, in him we move, and have our being. As also some of your own poets have said, for we are all his offsprings. Can you say this with me? I am begotten of God. Oh, I need you to do that better. Say, I am begotten of God. Because I am in the first begotten. I am chosen by God because I am in the one that was chosen. Please say this with confidence. I have eternal life because I have the life of Christ. I am righteous because I am in the righteous one. I am holy because I am in the holy one of God. I am heir to God's eternal riches. Because I am a joint heir with Christ. Can you stand to your feet and declare it? Say, I am seated at the right hand of God the Father. Because I am in Christ. Who is seated at the right hand of the Father. When you understand this, the proper response is gratitude. I want you to take 30 seconds and just express gratitude to God. Express some gratitude to God for your election. This, this Palm Sunday is a perfect time to, to actually be looking at this. Can you take some, some time? Just, just express gratitude to God that he chose you in Christ before the foundation of the world. Thank him, thank him. Thank him for the salvation of your soul. Thank him that you found him when you did. It was because of his love. It was because of his grace. Thank him for the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. Without that sacrifice, you and I will not be standing here. You and I will not be elect. We will not be, we, we will not be called the elect ones of God. Lord, we give you glory. We are grateful. We thank you. We thank you. Thank you for the sacrifice. Thank you for the price that was paid. Thank you for the wrath of God that was taken away. We are grateful, Lord. We are grateful. We thank you. We honor you. We worship you. And so I I pray and declare over your people today, Lord, over everyone who who, who is in the room today or those who are watching us online. And I, I declare in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that when the word of God is sown, all four categories of people heard the word. But some people, it is the cares of this world. Some is the sinfulness of riches. Some is the birds of the air. And we know what that is. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I speak over everyone. As you have heard the word of God today, it will not be taken away from you. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Your confidence and your assurance is in Christ. And nothing will take it away from you. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You are blessed and highly favored because you are in the one that is blessed. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ.